D'Amelio leads. Bradley in second position. And Stefan Bradl has closed the gap. And Tamashi can be there. Tamashi won the race here last year. And he had a terrible start. He yes. could still win. Anybody can win it. Valentino, Tamashi has come from 10th through the field to the leading group. On a 1-2-5, do you use up the tyres? Yes, that. yes, a bit, uh, a little bit, yes, but uh, it's not always like this. Depends from the condition and from which tire have uh, have Gabor. So maybe, maybe he arrive, he arrive to the lead and uh, he have enough, uh, enough tire for fight for the for the victory. Yeah? Bradle back to second. You saw him pass Bradley there. Oh. Ooh, <laughs> that's scary. On a even on a 1-2-5, that corner. What's it like riding that corner, Valentino? Nice. We've seen some crashes there uh, this yes. weekend. It must be incredible. Yes, it's unbelievable because you exit from, from the, the left already with fourth gear and you have to, to change direction and put two gears the same for, uh, for put the sixth gear and uh, make a short shift and go down. But it's completely blind. You don't, you don't know exactly the place where you have to change direction. And uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's a difficult, difficult corner because the speed is more than 200 uh, for hours. So. Is there a more exciting corner anywhere? No, no, I don't think so. Mm, I mean, uh, be because it's, it's very fast, so it's, uh, it's funny, but have uh, some corner more uh, more technical, uh, like uh, the two right uh, years before the last airbeam, for example. Yes. yes. Philip, most of Philip Island. Philip Island also the the long left uh, go over crest before the airbeam. Well, it's good to hear you say after Friday, somebody asked you a question, should they change the circuit? And you were very adamant, no, they must not change the circuit. It's, it's good It's good to be frightened. <laughs> no, uh, if, if we start to change the, the corners like, like in Assen or like here, you have to change all, all, the, all, the, all the tracks. It's better make the, the bike that go a little bit more slow, I think. OK, back at the front, Mike Tomelio continues to lead from Stefan Bradl who is second, six tenths of a second. Now that is... That was is a back marker. Don't worry. Thank you, thank you. We're all getting a bit the carried piatti. away here. The now then... <laughs> A, a, a part of the race where uh, everybody, uh, so these four understand that it's, it's not possible going away alone, so they they wait a little bit, but uh, Termaxi, Termaxi now overtake Bradley. He's up to uh, third position now for Gabal Taumashi, the man who started from pole position. A few more rain spots, look at the rain clouds in the background, there's some very dark clouds appearing. Now we will have to wait and see, the lap times have gone down, that's Mr Rossi pointing out that information out to me I'm not quite as observant as always but uh, Mike D'Amelio could be on a winner here we have got six and a half laps remaining here at this 125 German Grand Prix round 10 of the championship Bradley Smith in fourth position it's difficult for the riders his crew look on the rain falling little bit by little bit there you have an example of the raindrops on the camera and that's going to be nervous times for all of these 125 riders and when you're on a motorbike in sixth gear on a bit of track like this it doesn't feel like a shower it's like bullets hitting your visor isn't it this is the worst uh, condition for uh, for the riders because you have slick tire that is is impossible uh, with the with the wet and you have a lot of rain spot on the visor but the track is dry so you you don't understand exactly what is the try to to follow one to five to fifty try to understand the other races just for doesn't think a lot and uh, don't think a lot uh, you know we have uh, we have a uh, tire for uh, for cooler condition tire for hotter condition different uh, different setting but we have to wait uh, half an hour before the start for understand OK, and do you think uh, you're, you've got a strong chance in these difficult conditions if it's like this this afternoon? Mm, yes, uh, I mean, uh, I'm quite confident about my setting for, for, for the dry and for the wet, but like uh, everybody, all the riders say always that this condition is the, is the, the most difficult. Huh? And, uh, but anyway, like this, we start uh, everybody with sleek, for sure, but you have to keep attention. Have you got that 0.4 of a second you need to race with Casey? Um, maybe, maybe a bit, but uh, I don't know if it's enough for fight with Casey, especially because Casey is, is on pole position and uh, I, I unfortunately is just on the f on the third row. But uh, I think anyway, it's possible make make a good race. We look forward to it. We certainly do. We certainly do. Five laps remaining here for the 125 German Grand Prix. The leader, Mike Tomelio, gunning for 
his third victory of 2008. He was victorious at his home Grand Prix at Le Mans. Then he won in Barcelona, the Catalan Grand Prix. He had a terrible Dutch race, Julian. He was, uh, what, ninth position? Tenth position? Uh, seventh. Seventh, sorry. And he hasn't set a fastest lap of the race yet this year. Interesting. And Bradle is cutting the gap. It's come down from 0.8 to 0.6. Well, he's really leading. He's gone from third in the championship after Donington to sixth after Assen, so his form has dipped quite considerably, Toby. Uh, you've got to go back, as you say, to first race for his best result of the year. But the kid is very clever. He's very good at using slipstream. The bike always looks quick. It's not necessarily the quickest thing out there, but the boy is really, he's the right shape, he's aerodynamic, and he's clever at following. Yes, uh, always the, the, the German riders in the, in the past, in the story, have, have a fast 1 to 5 and 250 because uh, they have a good team and good, uh, good crew, I think. And, and people like Sepp Schlergel and Tuners. Like that they understand sale. a lot about the two stroke engine. And uh, if, you, if you see Bradel uh, speak, he's like a 30 years old rider. You, you never see uh, an interview. He's very yeah. quiet, uh, he speaks English uh, perfectly, so he's not a young rider, he's already... <laughs> and also looks like his father, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he does look like <laughs> his father. Like Helmut, yeah. <laughs> he Barbarian. Does, <laughs> he does look just like his father. Well, he might not be second because Gabor is really closing in. He's a hard rider, Gabor Taumashi. Really yeah. hard rider. Oh, oh Rafa. that's Rafael de Rosa, I believe. The pole, uh, the pole man from Mugello. Yes, unfortunately. So, so uh, not a good day there for Rafael. He, uh, well, he was having a good. He was in the top ten. Yes, he's, uh, they have. I know very well. Uh, Rafa is. Uh, sometimes we go to train together with uh, with motocross, and he say that the KTM this year have a lot of problems, and uh, Aprilia is, uh, is is faster. So they, they 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 expect more from that bike, but it looks like this year have more problems than last year. So that pole position at Mugello on a customer KTM was. A very very fine piece of riding then. No, no, he, he is a good rider, very very much. Uh, he's, uh, he, he rides very fine, you know. He's, uh, he's good, but uh, sometimes he suffers the, the the fight with the other guys, uh, and uh, you know, in Mugello with the slipstream, uh, it's possible make uh, make a good lap time. But uh, they have a problem with the KTM after the lap, the, the engine start to lose uh, some power. Okay. Demelio's not losing power, he's away. This is Simone Corsi battling with his teammate Nicholas Tyrol. Tyrol was ahead, but Corsi has come back for fifth position. Mm. Fifth position for Corsi. This is the battle for fifth with Tyrol, Corsi and Cortese. Scott Redding is next along in eighth place. This is very bad for, for the championship of, uh, of Simone because he's in trouble. He, he's very slow, slower also than Tyrol and Cortese. So I think he loses also these two positions. And at the same time, Di Melio make the difference and, and go, go away eh? because he take uh, another half a second, a little bit less than half a second in the last lap. So he's... It's looking to be another 25 points for Mike D'Amelio, and as Valentino says, if Corsi finishes in sixth position, he will only get 10 points. So 15-point advantage could be coming to D'Amelio this afternoon. And look at that caption. There's the gap. Over 1.4 seconds for D'Amelio. Over the German and the Hungarian. And, and also, and also uh, Bradel is behind, uh, so in this condition he have an uh, easier job uh, for, for trying to follow Di Meglio, so it means that Di Meglio is faster, uh, is faster also for, from the front. So this is a really impressive job. This year, Di Meglio, we always knew he was fast, but he had a habit of crashing a bit too much. This year he has been consistent and consistently fast. World Championship form. And don't forget, it's a new, their new pastures for the AJO Motorsport squad. This is new for them to lead the championship as well, as Tyrol goes back to fifth position. The graphic is already out of date. Uh, there is your leader, the aforementioned Mike D'Amelio. Real hard case. He's, he's got a look like Randy Depunier. He's very sort of like a rugby player. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a brain that thinks like Olivier Jacques, and he's leading well here. One and a half laps remain here at the Saxon Ring for this 1-2-5 Grand Prix. Frenchman D'Amelio leads. German... It's possible. Also, if I think that Bradel uh, want to go on the podium in his home Grand Prix, and uh, Tarmaxi is the old fox for the last laps, but uh, Bradley is never give up and is quite uh, quite close. And uh, I, I think it's possible. It will be interesting, interesting fight for the podium, because, you know, arrive third on the podium is completely another uh, another party compared to arrive fourth. Because... <laughs> the wooden 
Italian medal, as I believe yes, the exactly, Italians are. Exactly. <laughs> I'm also glad that the Italians say a fast fox. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, look at oh, look at Assen two weeks ago, the five lap dash. Yes. Who should you put your money on? The hard old geezer, Talmashi was the man. We start the last lap here in Germany. Very difficult conditions for these one, two, five riders. But it's Mike Tomelio who started in sixth position, dropped to eighth after the first lap, and has sped through the field to lead by over two seconds. This is the battle on screen. This is the battle for second and third position. There's the father in the middle of the shot with his arms folded. As Helmut Bradl looks on, could a bit of a movement there from Stefan as he goes down the hill. Half a lap remaining. Good run from Bradley there, but he's still a good way from Talmashi. Quarter of a second at least. There's Demelio through the picture. His lead is over two seconds. It's up to him to lose it now. The Frenchman, the championship leader, has his fourth career victory in sight. Has Bradl got second? Can Bradley get third? Bradley Smith in fourth position. This is the place, this is the place for overtake, but uh, Gabor stay, fr stay inside, uh, but uh, ooh, from the outside. No, 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 no way, no way. Maybe, Tama Tama maybe the last corner, he have another chance. Eh? Maybe, maybe, maybe. He try, he try for sure. He exit better and he try. Ooh, yes, ooh, he's got to third. He goes wide. Tamelio's going to win the race, uh, uh, but it's going to uh, be uh, Tamashi. Mike Tamelio, third win for Mike Tamelio here in 2008, and that is a championship ride from Mike Tamelio. Uh, C Corsi. This is fifth position for Simone Corsi. Corsi uh, come back. Cortesi gets ahead of Tyrol, so the Germans have a good day here at the Saxon Ring. Mike Demelio and the Finnish-based Ajo Motorsport squad, their third victory of the year. The second... Oh, my oh. God! Carnage! Somebody's going to go down in here as we got one of the wild card. One wild card, that, is, yeah? uh, that is short. Oh, Ianone <laughs> getting missed out. And Ianone getting to 12th position. Schrotter getting a couple of points in 14th place. Crowd are happy. It's uh, also the best result for Bradel in his career, I think, no? Bradel never made, never No, he uh, had a second, podium eh? last year. Third. It's the best result oh, Bradel, because sorry, yeah. Bradel is second in this race. He was yes. third in Qatar. The new commentator might give the job. <laughs> Scott <laughs> Redding. I was thought he said eight. Bradley, not Bradel. That's no, why. No. <laughs> the ah, no, no, no. Valentino, what's it like winning here in Germany with the German fans? They seem to have an extra passion. Yes, yes. Yeah, the, yeah, the passion is very close to the track. I mean, uh, this is an old place uh, and. Uh, and the German people uh, like a lot the, 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 the racing with motorcycle, have a great passion, but they are always uh, quiet, you know, but for motorcycle they become a little bit crazy, so it's, uh, it's funny, it's funny. A little bit crazy like Mugello, maybe. <laughs> no, a little less. Less. <laughs> it's difficult to be more crazy. <laughs> Stefan Bradl in second position. Valentino Rossi, after 13 years, thank you very ciao, much indeed ciao, ciao guys. for coming I'm, to the commentary uh, I'm very box. sorry for Eurosport. I hope you find the work for remain uh, thank here you. with us. Eh? Thank you, Valentino. <laughs> we look forward to commentating on you in future years. <laughs> okay. Thank you very ciao, much. Ciao, tutti. And have a good race this afternoon.